Hey traders, T. Bradley 90 here. For those who do not know, Alex took on the challenge recently of seeing how much he can grow a $30,000 account in 30 trading days and the results are in and he made $84,000 in less than 30 trading days, which turned his $30,000 account into $113,000. Alex recently put together a free mentorship course with his mentor, Bao, explaining exactly how he did this. The link is available at myinvestingclub.co slash Alex. There's limited seating every single week, so be sure to reserve your spot. As a very special gift to our YouTube viewers, I want to announce something very special. This is my personal phone number, my personal number that I am putting out to you guys. If you have any questions about joining MIC or on the fence about joining our wonderful club, you can contact me now directly and personally, and I will get back to you. All right, guys, let's now get into uh, the Q&A. So this is the end of the tutorial and now the start of the uh, new member orientation webinar I give every single week, week, I think we're on week 24. And now we're just going to talk about anything that you guys want to talk about. This is a free for all communication. Do you guys have any questions about anything? I can just kind of rant or talk about charts or kind of like what my thought process was today. And basically we can talk about anything that is going on right now outside of the carnage that is this beauty right here. So does anybody have any questions for me while I'm here? And while we were talking, I just covered the last of uh, my trill. So I am, I was trying to, <laughs> so simultaneously during this webinar, I was trying to trade this. I was trading this and <laughs> giving a webinar. I hope I was able to communicate clearly. Um, but I just had a nice little win on, uh, basically shorted this whole pop on uh, TRIL and just covered here the last five minutes between here and here, a couple orders. So that was cool. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about why I did that. And honestly, this could probably bleed down here, but I don't care. Got the move, got the move I wanted. Solid day. Would have been a much more solid day had I caught this shit. Damn. Midday offering, man. Midday offering and look at the time that they did it, where we talk about the end of day give back always re resides at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Boom. Uh, Daryl, what's up, buddy? You brand new to trading? Tosh, can you please explain short and long? Yes, I can, brother. So longing, oh, and that's the, that's the thing, guys, is MIC, is let me explain something really quick before I do that, Daryl, is at a lot of other places, man, they don't want you to speak up and ask basic questions. Like, this is okay, man. There's no stupid questions at MIC. Let me make that clear. If you guys ever have even the most basic question that is okay, that we're not here to discourage. We're not here to turn you away. We are here to literally explain everything. So uh, Daryl, as you can probably guess, um, you know, coming into the markets, I'm sure you've heard before it, like, you know, a cocktail party or by the water coolers, longing a stock is where you want to ideally, ideally buy as low as you can and sell as high as you can. That's what a, that's what a long is. A short is literally just the inverse, buddy. So um, a short is a stock that has peaked out, given certain signs of why you want to short it, and then placing a negative or a sell position first. And so like, I'll just give you an example. I'll literally draw it out and make it as easy as possible. Say you shorted right here you know, somewhere up here, what you are doing is taking a negative position on the company right here. You are saying, I am selling first and betting against. The, the, the key here is I'm betting against. If it goes down, I'm gonna make money. So then when guys cover, which is an exit here on their short position, what they're what's called buying back their shares. So I am taking a negative position on the company and selling first to buy back my shares lower. You know, you can buy back them here or even here. It doesn't matter. But the point is, if this is a sell and these are covers, this is where you're exiting as if you would have, you know, is if you would have bought and sold. So you would have bought here. Uh, somewhere here, I'm just guesstimating, you know, anywhere, but, and then sold here. Does that make sense? So that's, that's the generic term of buy, sell, short, cover out. And this is what's called scaling. So if this was one order, you short right here, say, um, say you short 500 shares, maybe you cover 100, 200, 200, you piecemeal out. I hope that's very clear. That's the best description I can pretty much give. 
And then there are certain reasons, of course, Daryl, why you would buy or why you are short. There are, you know, obviously we play small caps, which are not phenomenal companies. They're not necessarily companies that you want to buy and hold, but they do offer uh, instances in which you can buy, which is obviously called like the first bounce or, um, you know, VWAP reclaims or high of daybreak, things like that. But you want to buy strong stocks. Um, you know, like NTRP on the way up when it's not breaking down, making strong moves, maybe a first bounce on a dip. So I usually look for something like this for a long right here at this line because it coincides. It's a very strong move. It's something that is not breaking down, especially come zombie hour, and it dips down to a place around VWAP with a consolidation point. So on something like this, I'm usually, well, back in the day when I did long, I would long right there. Nowadays, I just wait for topping out action, and then I short pop. So like my trade today was as simple on Trill as I am waiting for the mother of all slams. Boom, we got it. I am going to scale a pop. Boom, and I did. I scaled this uh, as we were doing the webinar, and I piecemealed out. So I covered here, covered here, covered here a little bit. Um, same, same goes for here. You let it top out and then you can short pop. So you can scale up to here and then boom, as you guys can see, that is called shorting. Um, something like this, which is just really no man's land. I hate shit like this. Um, this is OSS. It didn't really offer much range regardless whether you're long or short. But if you are short, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for a much outer line around this area because I want... Um, this overhead and what's called longs underwater to be in panic as this comes back up and they're selling out of their position causing selling pressure in which case the stock goes down. Uh, on Trill, I had lines at 350 and 365. So you had a line right here, buddy. Let's see. You had a line at 350 and 365. Okay. Uh, it was strong all day and didn't reach those areas until zombie hour. However, it perfectly rejected off those lines. The first time it touched them was the best idea to ignore it like I did uh, because I was fighting the trend zombie hour or should I put even small starters or is there no right answer to that? It's not that there's no right answer, barely, uh, uh, barely bullish. <laughs> nice name. Uh, I like that name. Uh, here's, here's the reason why in this specific example, you don't want to do that is because this is so strong, man. This is, see how this just got walked up. So you want it, you want to short things like this. Um, where's the daily chart? Not this one. Where was that really bad daily chart? I think it was suck. Actually, let me make this bigger so I can show you guys. Oop. One sec. Let me answer this as best I can. So look at subs yearly. This is the daily. See how this, see this? Just shit. Just, this is just terrible, man. This is just terrible. So anytime it pops, it's probably gonna come down because look at this just descend. You know, this just, it just can't hold its gains. It's always sold off into. But now let's look at, um, now let's look at Trill. You gotta always look at the daily charts, man. You gotta always look. This is too strong, man. Look at this. Every day that it's bought up, it's or, or every day that it's bought up, it actually goes up even more days. So it's bought up, it goes up another day, another day, and then when it has a red day, and then finally cracks, and people think, oh, the bag holders are going to finally get up. Nah, dude, this reclaims, and then it happens again. So like we get a nice drop, and people think this whole run is over, and then boom, people think this whole run is over right here, and then boom, and this, and it literally happened again. So on something like Trill. Right now, let's go to intraday. The reason why you don't want to hit for first resistance on this is because if I look at this, this is too strong right here. But if you do do first resistance, do the outer, outer, outer most line, like maybe four. Like literally, if you're looking at this, you got to think very, very like whole dollar number. You know what I mean? You got to really think like, dude, if this thing is front side, it's zombie hour, the daily chart is not exactly, um, you know, let me, let me remove all these. If the daily chart looks like this, you know, I got to think of like the most outer line, like literally like four, maybe even, you know, 480. Like these are kind of lines that I'm paying attention to. You know what I mean? Uh, but on something like this that has, let's see, let's go back. On something like this that has the absolute, absolute volume and, oh, shit, now I got to add VWAP again. <laughs> One sec. Uh, load steady set. 
but see something like this, man, where it's over VWAP all day, especially past zombie hour right here. Um, and it's just got the volume, you know, I was warning people all day, but I was also warning the fact that this, the reason why I wanted to short this, and I'll tell you exactly why. This is a very, very cool trick to have in your arsenal, or at least a um, at least a tool in your arsenal that will give you a good indication of when it's go time, it's probably go time. So look at this. Hey traders, T Bradley 90 here, Tosh Bradley from My Investing Club Chat. Just wanted to reach out to you personally and show you how to contact myself personally if you have any questions about joining MIC, about MIC in general, or are on the fence and need a little bit of guidance before you join. For the first time ever, I have put out my personal number for you to reach me directly among my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com and our Twitter and IG handles. Reach out today and get any information you need on what makes MIC so great and why you should join us today.